His solo flight across the Atlantic in 1927, backed by St. Louis business leaders, helped define the post-World War I world, an era of technology, American ingenuity, rugged individualism, and media coverage. And when Charles Lindbergh landed in Paris, he became arguably the most famous and admired man in the world. He took a very public and active role in the growing world of aviation. In the early days, TWA was dubbed the Lindbergh Line. And now, Colonel Lindbergh, on a coast-to-coast -coast inspection of the line, passes our ship in mid -air. But the kidnapping and murder of Charles and Anne Mora Lindbergh's child in 1932 was a terrible price he had to pay for being a modern-day celebrity. But when Lindbergh spoke, people listened, even if it wasn't about aviation. And with the war on in Europe, there was his admiration for Nazi Germany, his America First isolationism, and his public statements about Jewish influence in the media and government pushing America into war. He had his supporters, but his anti-Semitism made many uncomfortable then and is once again coming under scrutiny as we approach in just a few years the centennial of the historic flight by a historic figure so closely associated with St. Louis. And the author of last month's article in the Jewish Light and Riverfront Times confronting the Lindbergh legacy was local journalist Shula Newman. Shula, thanks for coming here. You know, this is a story we've talked about this. I've been interested in this in a while with the upcoming centennial, and you went ahead and wrote the article, so good for you. This is a difficult topic for St. Louis, and I think for America in general, dealing with its heroes mm -hmm. and some of their, their, their failures in, in life. So first of all, the reaction you might be getting from this article locally. So far, it's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, which is nice. I was worried a little bit that it might not be that. But people are saying, wow, this is one people said, I had no idea that Lindbergh actually isn't from St. Louis. Right. Um, you know, people just don't know a lot about him. So it was like, oh, that's why we have all these Lindberghs everywhere around the city. Um, but overwhelmingly, people are like, this is really thought provoking. This is a lot of information I didn't know. And they seem very appreciative to have the food for thought. I'll have to say that the flight is one of my favorite stories of the 20th century up to 1927, right? Mm -hmm. um, because of all it meant and the world reaction to it. Um, can we separate that, the, the incredible accomplishment, can we separate that from what he spoke of later in his life? I think so. I think that this is the challenge that we have when we examine all of our heroes. Um, he was an amazing aviator. His contributions to aviation, to modern day aviation, we still, some of the flight patterns that we follow, he established. You know, so there's no separating how integral he was to creating society as we know it today. Um, but he was a complicated man and uh, in many ways, not somebody that I would want to spend time with, um, but a complicated man. And that's, that's the whole point of what I hoped to get at in this article is like, look at our heroes and say, they did some amazing things, but they were also bad people. Both can be true. Yeah, was his anti-Semitism, you refer to something called genteel anti-Semitism, country club anti-Semitism, yes. which was, was not new then, and frankly, it's not new now. Was he more than that? Was he more, just, uh, more than just a man of his time in terms of how Jews were looked at? I don't think he was. I think he was very typical for the class that he came from. Um, and um, he did have some people that he, some Jewish people that he called friends, uh, but he felt like the people that he was comfortable associating with who were Jewish, they were the exceptions to how he saw the masses of Jews and the immigrants that were swarming the shores. I think that that was very typical for a lot of white Anglo-Saxon upper middle class people. So but I don't he spoke, think but he had the microphone. That's what makes him different. Yeah. And that's what makes he makes he becomes an authority, right? In a sense. He's he's a hero and people believe what he says. Yeah. And when he says, when he talks about some people have a disproportionate control over the media, every, you know, other person in the country understood that he's talking about Jews. Yeah, and it, was, it wasn't new then and it's not new now. Anti-Semitism, unfortunately, is never old news. So what's the relevancy? I mean, why, why run this article now, besides from a historical perspective? 
what should we be thinking about? And I encourage people to read this article, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I think that the relevancy is that even before October 7th and the war in, with Hamas and Israel right now, even before then, there was a rise in anti-Semitism already happening in this country. And I think I wanted to make sure that we examine, as a society, what anti-Semitism looks like now, what it looked like historically, and why we continue to tolerate it. Um, that was, th that's why I felt like it was important to write this article, um, that and to, to give people, to, to have people question themselves, you know? Yeah, the, the thing about Lindbergh, and I, I interviewed his daughter many years ago, Reeve Lindbergh, and she thought that in 100 years he would be remembered as the aviator. The, the, the rest of this might be forgotten. Wow. And in fact, we were talking before, 1957, The Spirit of St. Louis movie comes out. Mm -hmm. So everything that he was saying before World War II seems to have been erased at that time. Yes and no. It's very interesting. I mean, one, on the one hand, I think that not a lot of people, younger people especially, have any idea who Lindbergh is. Right. Uh, when I first started this article, I was talking with some high school students, and I asked them, and you know, they had no idea. Lindbergh, Lindbergh Boulevard, what, you know. So I don't think that anybody knows who he is, and I think those who do know are predominantly Jewish people, or avid historians, and they think, oh, and Lindbergh, anti-Semite. Well, share the article. Shula Newman's the author of the article Confronting the Lindbergh Legacy. You can find the article on the uh, Jewish Light and Riverfront Times websites. Shula, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate you coming. Oh, you're welcome. Glad to do it.